64,000 is the median number of words per book. Average person reads about 200 words per minute. Simple math will tell us that is one book in 320 minutes. To accomplish this in seven days, numbers say you would have to read for 45 minutes a day. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button, like, comment, and share. Enjoy. Hello, and happy day. How does slowing down sound to you today? Would you like to reduce the noise for just a bit? Are you ready to make a choice and decide to listen? My name is Igor S.F. Walker, and I'm here to remind people to slow down, to reduce the noise, to walk their lives into a natural flow. Welcome back to the Book of the Week series. Every week as I read another amazing title, I share it with the world. Today, we look at the game of life and how to play it by Florence Scovel Shin. In this video, we look at how our thoughts and words affect the experience we have in our daily lives. Some concrete examples to show how we can use them to bring more of what we want into our lives, including abundance, love, and success. Here, we look at how you can crystallize your own thinking and move forward on the path of where you truly want to and deserve to be. Stick around till the end. I will share with you some tools I have and have used that will help you tremendously in this game of life and how to play it well. Discover ways you can find out what actually motivates you, what innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. Tools to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management. This awareness will help you grow and advance in this game called life. What man images sooner or later externalizes in his affairs. To play successfully the game of life, we must train the imaging faculty. A person with an imaging faculty trained to image only good brings into his life every righteous desire of his heart. Health, wealth, love, friends, perfect self-expression, and highest ideals. The imagination has been called the scissors of the mind and it is ever cutting, cutting day by day. The pictures man sees there, and sooner or later he meets his own creation in his outer world. To train the imagination successfully, man must understand the workings of his mind. The Greeks said, know thyself. There are three departments of the mind, the subconscious, conscious and the superconscious. The subconscious is simply power without direction. It is like steam or electricity and it does what it is directed to do. It has no power of induction. The conscious mind has been called mortal or carnal mind. It is the human mind and it sees life as it appears to be. It sees death, disaster, sickness, poverty, and limitations and every kind, of every kind. And it impresses the subconscious. The superconscious mind is the God mind within each man and is the realm of perfect ideas. In it is the perfect pattern spoken of by Plato the divine design, for there is a divine design for each person. Subconscious mind, it is a man's faithful servant, but one must be careful to give it the right orders. Man has ever a silent listener at his side. His subconscious mind, every thought, every word, is impressed upon it and carried out in amazing detail. It is like a singer making a record on the sensitive disc of the phonographic plate. Every note and every tone of the singer's voice 
is registered. If he coughs or hesitates, it is also registered. So let us break all the old bad records in the subconscious mind, the records of our lives which we do not wish to keep, and make new and beautiful ones. Speak these words aloud with power and conviction. I now smash and demolish by my spoken word every untrue record in my subconscious mind. They shall return to the dust heap of their native nothingness, for they came from my own vain imaginings. I now make my perfect records through the divine within, the records of health, wealth, love, and perfect self-expression. This is the square of life, the game completed. It is much easier to demonstrate for someone else than for oneself. So a person should not hesitate to ask for help if he feels himself wavering. A keen observer of life once said, no man can fail if some one person sees him successful, such as the power of the vision. And many a great man has owed his success to a wife or a sister or a friend who believed in him and held without wavering to the perfect pattern. A person knowing the power of the word becomes very careful of his conversation. He has only to watch the reaction of his words to know that they do not return void through his spoken word. Man is continually making laws for himself. Someone has said that courage contains genius and magic. Face a situation fearlessly and there is no situation to face. It falls away of its own weight. The invisible forces are ever working for man who is always pulling the strings himself, though he does not know it. Owing to the vibratory power of words, whatever man voices, he begins to attract. People who continually speak of disease invariably attract it. After a man knows the truth, he cannot be too careful of his words. Talk about what we want, not about what we do not want. There's an old saying that man only dares use his words for three purposes, to heal, to bless, or to prosper. What man says of others will be said of him, and what he wishes for another he is wishing for himself. Continual criticism produces rheumatism, as critical inharmonious thoughts cause unnatural deposits in the blood, which settle in the joints. False growths are caused by jealousy, hatred, unforgiveness, fear, and so on. Every disease is caused by a mind not at ease. There's no use asking anyone, what is the matter with you? We might just as well say, who is the matter with you? Unforgiveness is the most prolific cause of disease. It will harden ar arteries or liver, and it will affect the eyesight. In its train are endless ills. Any inharmony on the external indicates there is a mental inharmony, as the within, so the without. Man's only enemies are within himself, and a man's foes shall be there of his own household. Personality is one of the last enemies to be overcome as this planet is taking its initiation in love. It was Christ's message, peace on earth, goodwill towards man. The enlightened man therefore endeavors to perfect himself upon his neighbor. Resist not evil, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Nothing on earth can resist an absolutely non-resistant person. The Chinese say that water is the most powerful element. 
because it is perfectly non-resistant. It can wear away a rock and sweep all before it. Jesus said, resist not evil. For he knew in reality that there is no evil, there's nothing to resist. Evil has come of man's vain imagination. Or believe in two powers, good and evil. Make the statement, every man is a golden link in the chain of my good. For all men are God in manifestation, awaiting the opportunity given by man himself to serve the divine plan of his life. Bless your enemy, and you rob him of his ammunition. His arrows will be transmuted into blessings. This law is true of nations as well as individuals. Bless a nation, send love and goodwill to every inhabitant, and it is robbed of its power to harm. When you use non-resistance with wisdom, no one will ever be able to walk over you. Make an affirmation immediately upon waking up. For example, die will be done this day. Today is a day of completion. I give thanks for this perfect day. Miracles shall flow, and miracles shall follow miracle, and wonders shall never cease. Make this a habit, and one will see wonders and miracles come into his life. I have a wonderful work in a wonderful way. I give wonderful service for a wonderful pay. For men, can only be what he sees himself to be, and only attain what he sees himself attaining. Nothing ever happens without an onlooker, is an ancient saying. Man sees first his failure or success, his joy or sorrow, before it swings into visibility from the scenes set in his own imagination. Obedience precedes authority, and the law obeys man when he obeys the law. The law of electricity must be obeyed before it becomes man's servant. When handled ignorantly, it becomes man's deadly foe. So with the law of mind. Desire is a tremendous force, and it must be directed in the right channels, or chaos ensues. In fact, active faith is the bridge over which man passes to his promised land. Man should watch himself hourly to detect his motive for action. Is it fear or is it faith? Choose ye this day whom we shall serve, fear or faith. Perhaps one's fears of personality then do not avoid the people feared. Be willing to meet them cheerfully, and they will either prove golden links in the chain of one's good, or disappear harmoniously from one's pathway. Man in ignorance of the law brings about his own destruction. All disease, all unhappiness, come from the violation of the law of love. Man's boomerangs of hate, resentment, and criticism come back, latent with sickness and with sorrow. Love seems almost a lost art, but the man with the knowledge of spiritual law knows it must be regained, for without it he has become as sounding brass and clinking cymbals. Man himself limits his supply by his limited vision. Sometimes the student has a great realization of wealth, but is afraid to act. The vision and action must go in hand in hand. Infinite Spirit, open the way for the divine design of my life to manifest. Let the genius within me now be released. Let me see clearly the perfect plan. Perfect self-expression will never be labor, but of such absorbing interest that it will be almost seem like play. The student knows. Also, as man comes into the world, 
financed by God. The supply needed for his perfect self-expression will be at hand. Many a genius has struggled for years with the problems of supply. When his spoken worth, word and faith would have released quickly the necessary funds. Every man is a David who say, slays Goliath. Moral thinking with the little stoned faith. Often fear stands between man and his perfect self-expression. Stage fright has hampered many a genius, and this may be overcome by the spoken word or retreatment. The individual then loses all self-consciousness and feels simply that he is a channel for infinite intelligence to express itself through. In divine mind, there's only completion. Therefore, my demonstration is completed. My perfect work, my perfect home, my perfect health. Whatever I demand are perfect ideas registered in divine mind and must manifest under grace, in a perfect way. I give thanks I have already received on the invisible and make active preparation for the receiving on the visible. There is a difference between visualizing and visioning. Visualizing is a mental process governed by the reasoning or conscious mind. Visioning is a spiritual process governed by intuition or the superconscious mind. The student should train his mind to receive these flashes of inspiration and work out the divine pictures through definite leads. And there you have it. Please do help out. It is easy. Simply like this video so more people can enjoy it. Share it too and spread the word. Leave a comment and share your thoughts. Subscribe to my channel and stay up to date. And the link to this book is in the description below. So buy it and read. Never stop learning, especially learning about yourself and nature. So gift yourself by taking the free human needs test on my website and find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. And if you feel you are ready to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management and relationship management even further, do check out my Master of Life Awareness program. Links are in the description below. Thank you. Love and respect.